Yashar Jasher 85, and King Arad the Kenani, who dwelt in the Negev, heard that Yashar El had come by the way of the spies, and he arranged his forces to fight against Yashar El. And the children of Yashar El were greatly afraid of him, for he had a great and heavy army. So the children of Yashar El resolved to return to Mitzrayim, and the children of Yashar El turned back about the distance of three days' journey unto Mosorot and Bene Ya'achan, for they were greatly afraid on account of the king Arad. And the children of Yashar El would not get back to their places, so they remained in Bene Ya'achan for thirty days. And when the children of Levi saw that the children of Yashar El would not turn back, they were jealous for the sake of Yahuwah, and they rose up and fought against Yashar El, their brethren, and slew of them a great body, and forced them to turn back to their place, Mount Hor. And when they returned, King Arad was still arranging his host for battle against Yashar El, and Yashar El vowed a vow, saying, If you will deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yashar El, and he delivered the Kena'anim into their hand, and he utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Chorma. And the children of Yashar El journeyed from Mount Hor and pitched in Ovath. And they journeyed from Ovath and they pitched at Aye Ha'avarim in the border of Moab. And the children of Yashar El sent to Moab, saying, Let us pass now through your land into our place. But the children of Moab would not suffer the children of Yashar El to pass through their land. For the children of Moab were greatly afraid, lest the children of Yashar El should do unto them as Sihon, king of the Amorim, had done to them, who had taken their land and had slayed many of them. Therefore, Moab would not suffer Yashar El to pass through his land. And Yahuwah commanded the children of Yashar El, saying that they should not fight against Moab. So Yashar El removed from Moab. And the children of Yashar El journeyed from the border of Moab, and they came to the other side of Arnan the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorim. And they pitched in the border of Sihon, king of the Amorim, in the wilderness of Kedamoth. And the children of Yashar El sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorim, saying, Let us pass through your land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards, we will go along by the king's highway until we shall have passed your border. But Sihon would not suffer Yashar El to pass. So Sihon collected all the people of the Emorim and went forth into the wilderness to meet the children of Yashar El. And he fought against Yashar El and rather in Yahats. And Yahuwah delivered Sikhon, king of the Amorim, into the hand of the children of Yashar El. And Yashar El smote all the people of Sikhon with the edge of the sword and avenged the cause of Moab. And 
the children of Yashere El took possession of the land of Sichon from Aram unto Yebach, unto the children of Amon, and they took all the spoil of the cities. And Yashere El took all these cities, and Yashere El dwelt in all the cities of the Emorim, and all the children of Yashere'el resolved to fight against the children of Amon, to take their land also. So Yahuwah said to the children of Yashere'el, Do not besiege the children of Amon, neither stir up battle against them, for I will give nothing to you of their land. And the children of Yashere'el hearkened to the word of Yahuwah and did not fight against the children of Amon. And the children of Yashere'el turned and went up by the way of Bashan to the land of Og, king of Bashan. And Og, the king of Bashan, went out to meet Yashere'el in battle. And he had with him many valiant men, and a very strong force from the people of the Emorim. And Og, king of Bashan, was a very powerful man, but Na'aran, his son, was exceedingly powerful, even stronger than he was. And Og said in his heart, Behold, now the whole camp of Yashara'el takes up a space of three parsa. Now will I smite them at once, without sword or spear. And Og went up Mount Yahatz and took therefrom one large stone, the length of which was three parsas, and he placed it on his head and resolved to throw it upon the camp of the children of Yashara'el to smite all Yashara'el with that stone and the angel of Yahuwah came and pierced the stone upon the head of Og. And the stone fell upon the neck of Og. That Og fell to the earth on account of the weight of the stone upon his neck. At that time, Yahuwah said to the children of Yashara'el, Be not afraid of him. For I have given him and all his people and all his land into your hand, and you shall do to him as you did to Sichon. And Moshe went down to him with a small number of the children of Yashara'el. And Moshe smote Og with a stick at the ankles of his feet and slew him. The children of Yashara'el afterward pursued the children of Og and all his people, and they beat and destroyed them till there was no remnant left of them. Moshe afterward sent some of the children of Yashara'el to spy out Ya'ezer, for Ya'ezer was a very famous city. And the spies went to Ya'ezer and explored it, and the spies trusted in Yahuwah, and they fought against the men of Ya'ezer. And these men took Ya'ezer and its villages, and Yahuwah delivered them into their hand, and they drove out the Emorim who had been there. And the children of Yashara'el took the land of the two kings of the Emorim, Sixty cities which were on the other side of the Yardan, from the brook of Arnan unto Mount Cheman. And the children of Yashara'el journeyed and came into the plain of Moab, which is on this side of the Yardan, by Yeriko. And the children of Moab heard all the evil which the children of Yashara'el had done to the two kings of the Emarim to the Sachon and Og, Og. So all the men of Moab were greatly afraid of Yashara'el. And the elders of Moab said, Behold, 
the two kings of the Emorim, Sihon and Og, who were more powerful than all the kings of the earth, could not stand against the children of Yashadael? How then can we stand before them? Surely they sent us a message before now to pass through our land on their way, and we would not suffer them. Now they will turn upon us with their heavy swords and destroy us. And Moab was distressed on account of the children of Yashadael, and they were greatly afraid of them, and they counseled together what was to be done to the children of Yashadael. And the elders of Moab resolved and took one of their men, Balach, the son of Sippor, the Moabi, and made him king over them at that time. And Balach was a very wise man. And the elders of Moab rose up and sent to the children of Midian to make peace with them. For a great battle and enmity had been in those days between Moab and Midian, from the days of Hadad, the son of Bidad, king of Edom, who smote Midian in the field of Moab unto these days. And the children of Moab sent to the children of Midian, and they made peace with them. And the elders of Midian came to the land of Moab to make peace in behalf of of the children of Midian. And the elders of Moab counseled with the elders of Midian what to do in order to save their lives from Yashareel. And all the children of Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now therefore, the children of Yashareel lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. For thus did they do to the two kings of the Emarim, who are stronger than we are. And the elders of Midian said to Moab, We have heard that at the time when Sihon, king of the Emarim, fought against you, when he prevailed over you and took your land, he had sent to Beor, the son of Janes, and to Balaam, his son from Aram, Naharaim, and they came and cursed you. Therefore did the hand of Sihon prevail over you, that he took your land. Now therefore send you also to Balaam, his son, for he still remains in his land, and give him his hire, that he may come and curse all the people of whom you are afraid. So... The elders of Moab heard this thing, and it pleased them to send to Balaam, the son of Beor. So Balach, the son of Sippor, king of Moab, sent messengers to Balaam, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Mitzrayim. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Now therefore come and curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perchance I shall prevail to fight against them and drive them out. For I heard that he whom you bless is blessed, and whom you curse is cursed. So the messengers of Balak went to Balaam and brought Balaam to curse the people, to fight against Moab. And Balaam came to Balak to curse Yashadael, and Yahuwah said to Balaam, Curse not this people, for it is blessed. And Balak urged Balaam day by day to curse Yashadael. But Balaam hearkened not to Balak on account of the word of Yahuwah, which he had spoken to Balaam. And when Balak saw that Balaam would not accede to his wish, he rose up and went home. And Balaam also returned to his land, and he went from there to Midian. And the children of Yashadael journeyed from the plain of Moab, and pitched by the Ardan, from Beit Ha Yeshi Yomoth, even unto Avel Shittim, at the end of the plains of Moab.
And when the children of Yashara'el abode in the plain of Shittim, they began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And the children of Yashara'el approached Moab, and the children of Moab pitched their tents opposite to the camp of the children of Yashara'el. And the children of Moab were afraid of the children of Yashara'el, and the children of Moab took all their daughters and their women of beautiful aspect and comely appearance, and dressed them in gold and silver and costly garments. And the children of Moab seated those women at the door of their tents in order that the children of Yashara'el might see them and turn to them and not fight against Moab. And all the children of Moab did this thing to the children of Yashara'el, and every man placed his woman and daughter at the door of his tent. And all the children of Yashara'el saw the act of the children of Moab, and the children of Yashara'el turned to the daughters of Moab, and coveted them, and they went to them. And it came to pass that when an Ivri came to the door of the tent of Moab, and saw a daughter of Moab, and desired her in his heart, and spoke with her at the door of the tent that which he desired, while they were speaking together, the men of the tent would come out and speak to the Ivri like unto these words, Surely you know that we are brethren. We are all the descendants of Lot and the descendants of Avraham, his brother. Wherefore then will you not remain with us? And wherefore will you not eat our bread and our sacrifice? And when the children of Moab had thus overwhelmed him with their speeches and enticed him by their flattering words, they seated him in the tent and cooked and sacrificed for him, and he ate of their sacrifice and of their bread. They then gave him wine, and he drank and became intoxicated, and they placed before him a beautiful damsel, and he did with her as he liked, for he knew not what he was doing, as he had drunk plentifully of wine. Thus did the children of Moab to Yashara'el in that place, in the plain of Shittim. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yashara'el on account of this matter. And he sent a pestilence among them. And there died of Yashara'el 24,000 men. Now there was a man of the children of Shimon, whose name was Zimri, the son of Kalu who connected himself with the Midyani, Kazbi, the daughter of Sir, king of Midyan, in the sight of all the children of Yashara'el. And Pinichach, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon, the priest, saw this wicked thing which Zimri had done. And he took a spear, and rose up and went after them and pierced them both and slew them. And the pestilence ceased from the children of Yashara'el.